Look upon this picture. And now on this. The struggle for control of the minds of men continues. But which type of control? This? Or the control which allows the mind to open the pathways to wisdom? In Claremont, California, a group of colleges has been brought into being under a new concept in education that is unique and exciting in this struggle for men's minds. development began with Pomona College. Founded in 1887 in the New England tradition, its first building was an abandoned hotel. But then as now, California was growing rapidly. Pomona soon expanded its facilities to accommodate more students. Its growing number of friends provided this privately endowed college with the funds to maintain its growth. The academic importance of Pomona was quickly gaining national attention. Teddy Roosevelt spoke there in 1902. By 1915, it became necessary to restrict enrollment in the interest of academic quality. In 1923, three out of every four applicants were turned away. Classrooms were filled to capacity. The college had to expand or drastically limit its enrollment. Dr. James Blaisdell, then president of Pomona, saw in this problem an exciting promise for the future. He said, my own very deep hope is that we might have a group of institutions divided into small colleges, somewhat on the Oxford type. In this way, I should hope to preserve the inestimable personal values of the small college while securing the facilities of the great university. Ellen Browning's scripts, sensitive and shy, was deeply inspired by this idea. She contributed 300 acres of land to serve the needs of future colleges. Over the years, numerous other private citizens have given buildings, facilities, and time. Today, Dr. Blaisdell's vision has become five widely noted individual institutions for higher education. Their destinies are guided by five separate presidents who work together on physical and financial needs, yet who vigorously guard the academic individuality of their respective institutions. This is Claremont University College, the graduate school and the coordinating institution for the group. It owns and operates the numerous facilities used jointly by all. There is Claremont Men's College, Harvey Mudd College, Pomona College, and Scripps College. Under the Oxford or group plan, all of these resident colleges are served by the Honold Library, one of America's outstanding collegiate libraries. This room, reserved for research, houses the largest collection of books about Oxford University in the nation. Great Oxford, where 800 years of group plan education has proven its value in maintaining freedom of opinion and variety in the university. The 3,000 volumes here indicate the influence of a great university on the thought of the English-speaking world and the importance of its example to the Claremont Group. Honold Library is a joint facility. As such, it brings together students from all members of the Claremont Group. The graduate student, the woman from Scripps, the student from Claremont Men's, 
the engineering major from Harvey Mudd, and the student from Pomona. They are brought here by a common need, yet they are encouraged to preserve the individuality necessary to outstanding education. This is Pomona College. It's a liberal arts institution with emphasis on the social sciences, natural sciences, and humanities, and has a strong athletic program. It is coeducational. It's the oldest and largest of the colleges. Enrollment about 1,000, a distinguished faculty of 111. The curriculum taught is purposely broad. Science facilities are among the finest in any liberal arts institution in America. This is the cyclotron, where the student gains first-hand knowledge of atomic theory. A small class in painting is part of an intensive humanities program requiring close contact with the instructor. The social sciences also receive strong emphasis here. Pomona recognized early that the language barrier has hindered Americans from communicating their ideas abroad. That's why they place special importance on their language laboratory, a new instructional technique. The language is Russian. Repeat a phrase, record it, play it back to gain conversational fluency. Now, will you please stop your records and play it back so that I can hear your correct pronunciation. Miss Becker, will you repeat, please, last sentence? Va Nikolaevicha Tolstova, Vyelikova Ruskova Pisatilya. Now, Miss Becker, how would you like to go with me to a Moscow restaurant? I'm the waiter and you are the patron. First, I will ask you in Russian, what would you like to have for lunch? Что бы вы хотели на обед? Я бы хотела русский борщ, если можно. Пожалуйста, чаю или кофе? Надеюсь, не водки. Да, пожалуйста, кофе. If we are to make people feel that we are friends, we have to use not only right words, but also Correct pronunciation. Combining both personal instruction and modern techniques, the language laboratory is important in the race to communicate our ideas. Among the arts, the college's accomplishments in music are particularly well known. This is Pomona's student orchestra. College is a seasoned, well-rounded institution. Its graduates have, through the years, attained national distinction in both scholarship and leadership. 
These men and women have been enriched and benefited from the other colleges in the group plan, which has also helped Pomona preserve its traditional character. Scripps College is a liberal arts college for women. It was founded in 1926 and named in honor of Ellen Browning Scripps. Like all of the colleges at Claremont, it is privately endowed. There are about 300 students, a faculty of 33. This is Scripps' motto, Incipit Vita Nova, new life begins. Miss Scripps believed that harmonious beauty was in itself an education. The college reflects this idea. The classic atmosphere of the Denison Library is typical of Scripps. The thought is to bring the student into close communion with the great artistic and literary achievements throughout history. This, it is believed, will significantly influence the way she thinks. The program of study consists of five broad fields. Literature, the arts, social studies, science, psychology, philosophy, religion. This is the Mary B. Air Nursery, where the student gains first-hand knowledge in the psychological study of small children. A unique advantage of the Claremont group plan to the Scripps woman is her ability to take selected classes at the other colleges. A swimming pool and other recreational facilities are part of the campus. The heart of the Scripps program, the humanities, make up 40% of the students' first three years. This is a junior humanities class. The subject, Schiller's views on the French Revolution. The principle being that the French were fighting to regain their freedom, their liberty. Well, I suppose he saw the events of the French Revolution somewhat like illustrated here. Uh, here you have a revolutionary tribunal, uh, that's the revolutionary judges, as you see, uh, drunk or asleep or both, and here is the poor victim, what chance has he gotten? This, of course, is done by an enemy of the French Revolution. Here you have another, this time by a friend of the French Revolution, and what he presents is the massacre of revolutionary prisoners by a counter-revolutionary army. Again, bloodshed. Uh, this is, of course, the beheading of the king, a uh, very gory spectacle, to be sure. According to him, what was wrong with the French Revolution was that it changed the institutions before they changed men. They, they introduced institutions for which the men were not yet prepared. It was for free men, but they were not yet taught how to be uh, free. Yes, Gay? It seems to me that this is the usual argument of a dictator. The masses aren't ready for democracy. I think it's all right to change institutions before you change men. And I think it is all right to trust men that by and by they will be educated by their own uh, institutions. Instruction at Scripps stresses both the value of individual thought and the importance of community life. They urge the student to live her education. The belief is that she will be influenced throughout her life by the sense of intellectual and social participation, which can only be found at a small, intimate college. Claremont Men's College is a liberal arts college emphasizing economics and government. It was founded in 1946. CMC students, there are about 430 of them, are educated in the philosophy and problems of free government and of a free society. Today, the college has its own classrooms and dormitories. Here, they encourage lively discussion of public affairs. The atmosphere is one of academic freedom, where men learn to deal with controversy in both politics and economics. The college's 38 faculty members are sharp and outstanding. Practical business and government experience is the norm among them. The voluntary ROTC program, which is maintained jointly with Pomona, stresses a high development of skill among a small group. A number who have completed the program have distinguished themselves in the armed forces. This is the football game with Caltech. 
Physical education at CMC is mandatory, both as education and for social development. The instructors here are quick to encourage discussion and debate. After all, they say, this is what the student will face when he graduates. What do you think the alternative to inflation is? Stable price level and the same level of prosperity we've had the last 10 or 20 years? Well, that's, of course, the goal towards which all economists are working. How many economists do you think really regard this as a possibility? Well, I think quite a few do now. And remember that 30 years ago, very few economists thought that recessions, depressions, or general national growth could be controlled. And how about the practical side, the record? Inflation is actually a detriment to economic growth since it destroys the confidence consumers have in our economic system. Now, just, just suppose that the alternative to inflation is deflation, not price stability, that you can have your choice either of rising prices or of falling prices. Which of these two would you choose? I guess I'd have to take the rising prices. With falling prices, people on fixed incomes benefit. But to my way of thinking, this is a small minority. Those in the business world, businessmen, wage earners, stockholders, would be seriously hurt by deflation. It would seem to me we can have both price stability and economic growth. Good gentlemen, can we have everything? Well, no, we can't. We can work towards the optimum combination of things. I think this is the key question, to get the best possible combination. Inflation, unemployment, to extend or curb the powers of government are important problems. The purpose of this college is to prepare men to solve them with an appreciation for American tradition. Men intensely interested in our way of life, leaders for business and government are the kinds of students Claremont Men's College aims to produce. Though slightly more than a decade and a half old, its graduates are fine testimony to the success of its educational concepts. Harvey Mudd College was opened in 1957. It's a co-educational college of science and engineering and will ultimately accommodate 370 students. It was founded because today there's an urgent need for physical scientists and engineers with broad training in the social sciences and the humanities. One third of the curricular time is devoted to the humanities and social sciences. Though new, Harvey Mudd College has taken shape quickly and when needed because of the group plan. The land required was immediately available. Classrooms and buildings have been loaned by the other colleges. Harvey Mudd now participates in athletic events with Claremont Men's College. Hanold Library, the infirmary and administrative joint facilities were immediately available. The college is purposely small and personal. Even freshman classes are taught by seasoned professors. The science and engineering regimen is tough and modern and daring enough to consider say the relation of man and machine resulting from the electronic computer and the step beyond it, automation. But occasionally large groups of people have lost their jobs. Now with automation, this dislocation can occur at a much more rapid pace and on a larger scale than anything we have known. These young men come to realize that there is a new social dimension in the enormous power wielded by science. This places a responsibility on all of us including the people who design and operate these machines, because the harmful effects have to be minimized as much as possible. This is not something that businessmen and political leaders can settle for themselves because they don't know how the gadget works. We've passed the point where the engineer or the scientist can simply say, here it is. This is the challenge facing you. No, there are no pat answers. The problems are too real. The goal of Harvey Mudd is to create competent specialists who are, at the same time, educated persons. Harvey Mudd College is the first privately endowed institution of its kind founded in the nation in the past three decades. Its program is new. Its future is bright. The Claremont Graduate School, the graduate school of all the colleges, offers advanced instruction and research in the humanities, fine arts, social sciences, education, psychology, and botany. It was founded in 1925. Its 400 students are drawn from all parts of the world. There are 100 faculty members. About 60 come from the undergraduate colleges. Here, formal instruction is cut to a minimum. Students exercise their own initiative and independently seize the opportunity to learn. It might be in psychology, or in a new evaluation of the great achievements of the past.
These programs lead to the Master of Arts, Master of Fine Arts, and Doctor of Philosophy degrees. This is an examination for the Doctor of Philosophy degree in English literature. The subject, social criticism in the novel. I think that the novel is essentially a middle-class literary form, which arose partly because you had a middle class which was interested in reading, and partly because of some individual geniuses, such as Fielding. Do you find the same conditions affecting the novel today? Well, I think there are certain forces today which are tending to reshape the novel. Be specific. The impact of the mass media, for example. This is a critical time for the graduate student. He must know the subject. He must have a defensible point of view. Uh, post-war period, uh, modern psychology, which has tended to break down the form of the novel, and also increased specialization, which has broken up class structure so that the novelist doesn't feel that he's writing about uh, classes with real differences. Now, social criticism certainly isn't limited to the 20th century or, or even to the novel. I'd like to ask you, Mr. Ellsbury, uh, through what literary forms was social criticism offered before the emergence of the novel? Well, if we take the Renaissance, I suppose the prose tracts of a man like Nash, or the drama, even more important, in the histories of Shakespeare or the comedies of Ben Jonson. And before the Renaissance? The notable record of the graduate school has given it a position of recognized prominence in the field of education. The presence of the graduate students at Claremont and the opportunity of instructors from the undergraduate colleges to participate in its program has profoundly enriched these colleges and their students. Today, the recognized standards and eminent faculties of the five Claremont colleges place them among the most selective colleges in the country. A substantial number of students from the undergraduate institutions go on to graduate school for advanced study. All of the colleges have substantially more qualified applicants for admission than it's possible to accept. For this reason, ideas are constantly being considered for the founding of new colleges under the group plan to keep pace with the needs of an evolving society. This is a committee on future colleges. Its members, the five college presidents and selected trustees. As you know, we have already approved a woman's college for about 300 students, offering a liberal education in the arts with special emphasis on social sciences and economics. This committee is unique in the nation in that it meets regularly to consider founding new colleges. There are also plans for several other types of college to be presented today, all of which are in the preliminary stage. The provost will now present these plans. A group from our faculty suggests that we found an international college in which half the students and half the faculty would be drawn from nations other than the United States. Studies would be focused on such problems as economic development, the selection and change of political leadership, and other problems which are common to all nations, but which each nation must approach from its own individual background. An international college could contribute importantly to students from all over the world and to the students from the United States. And in addition, it would make a very valuable contribution to the students of each of the associated colleges. However, this is the type of thing which must be done very well if it is to be attempted at all. The group plan is working well at Claremont. It has provided at least part of the answer for these privately endowed institutions in their struggle to maintain quality in a time of unparalleled educational challenge. The people here seem to be motivated by the dynamism of Dr. James Blaisdell, who said of the group plan, I believe we are at the beginning of a new era of educational effectiveness.